So I recently did a video on converting points in 3D space to a point on the screen, on the user interface, and it logically follows that you should be able to go the other way. You should be able to, conv to convert... I feel like I just subjected myself to a million New Jersey jokes there. A point on the screen, uh, usually in the form of the mouse cursor, to a point in 3D space. And you can do that, although it's a little bit more complicated than that. Instead of converting a point to a point, you're converting a point to a 3D ray. I'll get to that later. So what I have here is a variation of the, uh, of the third person ray casting um, demo that I did recently. And the only difference now is that one, I took out gravity for the balls because that would just make things really annoying. And two, instead of uh, the balls flying in front, out in front of the player, they're flying out from the position of the mouse cursor on the screen. I also set their speed to go a little faster because I was getting tired of waiting for them to cross the room at a turtle's pace, but that's neither here nor there. So this is what it looks like now. Again, this is just a, uh, a, a save as over the, uh, the ray casting video. So balls still obey gravity. I'm going to do some housekeeping. First, let me, let me just go into the ball object. Where is the ball object? And I'm going to set gravity to zero. I'm not even going to bother to remove it. I'm just going to set it to zero. The next thing I'm going to do, because uh, currently the mouse is locked to the middle of the screen, and you don't really want that if you want to be able to mess around with moving the mouse around and having it interact with things, um, I am going to add a, a variable. And mouse lock is going to be true. And now, if mouse lock, this is where moving around is going to happen. So there's essentially going to be two modes here. I'm going to wrap this in a region. Just so that it takes up less space. Actually, let me... Let me do that. Else, if not mouse lock, we're going to be working from here. This is where the ball is thrown. Um, I am going to... Uh, I'm going to worry about that in a minute. I have it set so that the tab key uh, toggles mouse lock. So that if you hit the tab key, you go back and forth between the free, the free mouse and uh, from using it to control the camera. So let's hit tab. And I, I, I threw the thing off into infinity because gravity is zero. Um, I can move the mouse, and if I hit tab again, we go back to uh, we go back to business as usual. Okay, so I think that should be all the setup. And just like some very smart people have written a script to go from 3D point in world space to 2D point in, on the screen, uh, some also very smart people have gone the other way. I'm going to call this screen to world. Um, screen space, world space is usually how uh, usually how these things are referred to. I'm going to open up screen to world and I'm going to paste some code into it. And just like with the, uh, with, with the other one, with world to screen, this is a lot of matrix math. I believe it's slightly less matrix math than before, but either way, this is a lot of matrix math. I do not want to try and make a fool of myself by talking about matrix math. I will probably make you all leave this video more confused than when you joined. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is a software engineering practice known as having faith that the people who write algorithms for you know what they're doing and that it will work and that you don't have to. Hey. That's kind of getting into the territory of like, do you prefer high level computer science or low level computer science? Um, I, think it's, I think it's generally fair to say that I prefer high level because that means I don't have to deal with matrix math. Anyway, uh, dramaticism aside, we can use that, like I said, that script will work. I have tested it. I have used it for things. We can call the script. What is it? Screen to world. And it takes a few arguments, as you can see. It takes an x, a y. Uh, those are most likely going to be the mouse x and mouse y, unless there's something else on the screen that you want to project into the world. Uh, usually that's going to be the mouse. You may wish to use window mouse get x, window mouse get y. That may be like the more correct way of doing things. 
mouse underscore X and mouse underscore Y are relative to the view in the room. I'm not using views because this is 3D and because we don't like to make things easy for ourselves. But if, uh, if you are using views for something, you should probably use uh, the window mouse functions to get an absolute, um, an a absolute mouse, mouse position. The other thing it's going to take is a view matrix and a projection matrix. And I believe I was, uh, I was using those. And where is the camera? Do I need to set this up as well, or did I do this ahead of time? Okay, so I need to use the view and projection matrix. If you're only using one camera, you could say uh, camera get view mat and camera get proj mat, and you could specify the default camera or whatever. I don't do this. I have been known to use more than one cameras. Camera get active will return whatever one is active. You could say view get camera, and that would return the camera attached to a view. You could say camera get default, and that would do exactly what you think it is. Instead, I, I am going to um, I am going to save the view mat and the projection matrix, the view mat and the projection matrix. I am going to save the camera matrices to variables. Uh, let's do that where the 3D is initialized. Is that safe? All right, that is that is not exactly safe, but I'm going to do it anyway because I want to get this done quickly. So we're going to save the view matrix to a variable. Did I do this in the in the world to screen video? I can't remember. I feel like I did, but I don't know why I would have to do that. Oh yes, I do. Of course, obviously, world to screen that takes view matrices and projection matrices also. Anyway, we are saving the view and projection matrices to variables. We can we can use those later in the screen to world function. And like I said, this isn't entirely safe because this those variables are initialized to undefined, so I'm just going to do a, a safety check first. A reasonable person would say that if the camera's view matrix is undefined, then is not undefined rather than the projection matrix will also not be undefined because their values are set at the same time, but eh, I've never been one for reason. So getting back to screen to world, this is going to return an array. I'm going to call it vector, even though it's not really a vector. Actually, you know what? Since 2.3 is now out, and because I, I'm sure confusion about what exactly vectors are is going to be abounding, I'm going to call it mouse ray instead. So this returns a few, uh, this returns a few values. As you saw when I opened it up and scrolled to the bottom, um, screen to world returns an array of a couple different positions and a couple different other things. So the things that this function returns would be the vector in 3D space that the um, of the mouse, because like I said at the beginning of the video, the position of the mouse in a 3D world is not a single point, but it's a line, it's a ray. It is an actual ray and not just a, a fake line segment ray like I accused raycasts of being in, um, in the last video. You could think of the mouse as being a line that extends from the position of the camera off into infinity, and the x, y, and z components of that vector are the first three indices in the array that's returned, and the origin position is the second three. So instead of saying, uh, let's move this, let's let's move this mouse code, this this ball code rather. So if you click the left the left mouse button, instead of creating the ball at the player's position, we will create it at the camera's position, because the camera is a uh, slightly offset from the player, and that would make things weird. And we can make that Oh god, I did it again. I typed vector instead of a, instead of mouse ray. So the position that the uh, the ray is being projected out of, the camera's position is 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 here. And instead of throwing the ball in the direction that the player is looking, we are going to uh, set the ball's speed, so the vector representing the direction that the ball is moving in. We are going to set that to the direction that the mouse ray is is uh, is looking in. So that's index zero, index one, and the z speed, the z component is suddenly important, index two. Okay, and I also promised I would make this a little faster because uh, when I was 
putting together this demo, I did get a little bit bored of waiting for the ball to travel across the room. So let us let us move around and let us hit the tap key. And now when I click, the ball is going to shoot out of my face. Brand new sentence. And it's going to move in the direction that the mouse is pointing. So that's going to go through the floor because again, I didn't give the floor any collision information the way I did in the demo. If I throw it off into the sky, it's just gonna retreat until alarm zero goes off and it's deleted from the world or until it takes up less than zero pixels on the screen. I, I can do this as many times as I want. I can throw this at the player. The ball does not collide with the player, probably because what was I doing with the, uh, what was I doing with the collision masks? Oh, that's right. The player isn't actually in the game world, is it? Let me look at the code. Yeah, the player's object is not actually part of the game world. It's just being used to, ch to test for collisions. Okay. So you can use this. If instead of using it to throw balls at your targets, which is honestly probably not the most useful thing you could do with this, but it does communicate the points, so I went with it. Um, if you instead wanted to uh, select an object, whatever you clicked on, you could use this instead. But instead of uh, instead of creating a ball that travels off in the distance, you would use an actual raycast function. Hey. Is it C raycast world? I literally just recorded a video on this, and I've already forgotten what it's called. Uh, you would just raycast from the camera's position, and it's a its destination x, y, and z would be. The vector are the mouse ray. Um, except, except instead of, let's give that a mask, instead of having these values themselves, because the mouse ray is always going to be a normalized vector with a magnitude of one, meaning that the distance of your line segment cast is going to be one. I can see why they call it ray cast, because that line segment cast actually sounds really lame. So unless the, unless the thing you're trying to click on is right in front of your face, it's not going to detect anything. So you probably want to multiply this by like an arbitrarily large number. As long as it's the same arbitrarily large number. That is the wrong thing. Okay, you know what? I don't know what number that is and I don't feel like counting zeros. So let's, let's make the arbitrarily large number not a magic number. Not like a, a number that's not hard coded in. There we go. So now uh, we can say instead of throwing, instead of like throwing the ball, instead of making it travel, um, we can use the result of the raycast, and we can we can choose to only have this happen if uh, if you actually click on something. We can we can like stick the ball to it. We can get the uh, we can get the location of the uh, of the last hit. Stick the ball to it, and then I think the movement speed variables are initialized to zero. But just in case, just so that it doesn't go anywhere after that, we're gonna we're gonna set it. We're gonna uh, set them to zero. So let's let's uh, let's go over here. Tab. Uh, I click instead of throwing the ball. I automatically stick the ball to the target. If I click off in the distance, it's going to do that. All oh, right, because um, the ball is still being created and it's still flying. But it's only if I uh, if I actually click on something that it gets stuck there instantly. Okay, that is acceptable. I like to wonder like if I if I just like took a screenshot of this of this cube covered in purple dots and posted it on something without context, if people would be wondering like what in the world am I doing? Anyway, that is ray casting. I mean uh I mean ray picking. I mean a uh, screen to world. Words help. If you want to get information on what you, uh, if you want to get information on what you actually clicked on, it is C hit object, and you can attach a game maker instance ID to that with C hit get user ID. No, C object get user ID. I will talk about this in a future video. The fact that lightweight objects and structs have been introduced. To, uh, to Game Maker now, and those are not simple instance IDs, which are integers, is going to make this interesting. But that sounds like a problem for future me to take care of, so... Anyway, that's it for converting screen coordinates to a point in the world, or a vector in the world anyway.
My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games and stuff. I try to make one or two of these videos a week. I've got a Patreon for them if you want to chip in and join the fun. There's a link in all the usual places. If you just want the code for this, uh, there's a link to that in all the usual places also. Otherwise, have fun with this. Go nuts. Go ahead and cast your balls off into the world. I can't believe I just said that. Bye. Special thanks to Indie Punch and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to try and pronounce them out loud, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun.